All right, welcome back. It's uh, time to start skiing and we're back here with some reviews. We're gonna lay out uh, kind of the ski quiver, you could say, that I'm going to be using this winter. Got lots of questions about if I am even going to ski this winter. The answer is yes, and that has been verified. I've been out a few days, hip is holding up. I know we haven't done many reviews this summer. Healing from a hip uh, fracture is no joke. We'll just dive right into it. This is kind of how my thought process goes for a ski quiver, if and when that's ever something that you're able to or want to put together. First thing up is my lightest setup. These I've had these for a few years. They're the Ski Trab Magico 2s. I'm 5'10 and a half. I almost lie and say 5'11. I ski this in a 171. And I use this for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to go far or high when I just need the lightest setup that I can tolerate on my feet. Comes in total, I think like 4.3 pounds for the whole setup, something like that, 4.3 or 4.7. Pretty dang light. For me, that is ultra light. But it's a great ski, handles all kinds of conditions. It's a sturdy ski, it's, very, it's a high performance ski, it's no noodle. Uh, we've talked about it before, but that is my light setup. Um, my everyday ski this year is going to be the brand new Rosignol Escaper 97 Nano. And fun fact, this is essentially the exact same ski as the ski I skied last year, the Dinastar M-Tour 99. It's funny, Dinastar calls it a 99, Rosignol calls it a 97. You put them up against each other and they're identical profile, identical widths. Their construction is identical. They both mentioned using uh, basalt fibers and I've skied this uh, one good day already. And I think it's the same ski, which means it's awesome. It's an awesome ski. 1300 grams um, per ski. Paired it with the uh, DPS R10, all otherwise known as the ATK something 10. It's an ATK binding branded for DPS. Looks sexy with the red. And uh, the total setup for this is about seven pounds, you know, skis and bindings. And for me, that's a great weight and a great width just for every day, anything, multiple conditions, soft, hard, chunder, you know, you're gonna have fun with a ski like this. For the big, we could say heavy, but I like to just call it my powder setup because it's still pretty light for what it is. We uh, saw that Armada was actually putting out or manufacturing a legitimate touring line this year, the Locator series. And the Locator 112 comes in this sexy racing red colorway, 112 underfoot, it's like 1480 grams, somewhere in there, less than 1500, I believe, which for me is kind of a, a barrier. When, I, when it comes to powder touring skis, I can't really handle anything over 1500 grams. I had a Hagan Core 12, um, one of their previous year editions, I think it's from like two or three years ago, sitting in a box in my basement, and I thought that'd be a perfect pairing. Has their original free ride spacer on here. Uh, you know, enough binding to get a little sendy, but still very, very light for what it is. Had to put a little toe shim underneath it just to get it to work with my boot sole. Total weight on this setup, skis and bindings, we are looking at 8.3 pounds, I believe. Call it eight and a half. So you can see there's kind of a nice step up, you could say, you know, you're super light. I mean, this is like in the four pound range. Midweight, you know, call it seven pounds. And then your powder ski, obviously is gonna step up in weight, but it's not insane, about eight, eight and a half, eight and a half pounds or less for powder setup. And that, for me, kind of covers everything that, that we're gonna encounter locally or stuff we wanna do. Although I do have a wild card this year. If you have ever skied the South Sister Volcano in heinous conditions, as we have, you come home and you start thinking, what would be a good volcano ski? And for me, the criteria was, well, I want a width 90 
millimeters underfoot, right around there. I don't want super skinny, but I don't want super fat, but something, you know, with enough girth to handle whatever conditions you might find. And not only that, but a weight that is not featherweight. This ski, the Hagan Core 89, weighs 1,250 grams per ski. Now, if you remember my 99 underfoot ski weighs almost the same. It's like 1300 grams per ski. So some would say like, oh dude, this is a super heavy ski. Why would you ski that? It's like, well, it's not super heavy, but it is for its width. It's on the heavier side of light, I would say. And when you are skiing uh, Sestrugi and you are you know, skiing just either boilerplate or stuff that is just very, very difficult, having just that little bit extra mass underfoot is very helpful. You know, it, is, it, it makes survival skiing much more survivable, I guess. Paired on this, I saw the ATK Kular binding and was intrigued. It's a, it's a great uh, kind of lightweight, very sturdy, but has some cool features to it. Maybe we'll talk about it later, but you can look up and nerd, up, nerd out on that. Uh, all you want, but the ATK Kular binding. And so this setup actually ends up being just under seven pounds. If you're talking just my everyday setup, I, I'd say, yeah, this is too heavy for an everyday setup for this width, for me. For others it might work, but for me. But for an objective ski, for a purpose-driven uh, ski, I think it's gonna work out very well. Danny has skied this ski as well uh, extensively the end of last season and his report was exactly that. It handles variable conditions with aplomb and it is a very damp and stable ski. So there you have it. There is a ski quiver, if you will. Do not tell my wife that I have this many skis. I keep them strategically separated. They can never be seen more than uh, two at a time, but um, it does make skiing fun, I guess, when you can kind of pick the right tool for the right job. So we'll be back with a report on all these skis other than the Magicos, but uh, until then, uh, have a good season.